Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making chicken sujibi, a Korean hand-torn noodles chicken soup. If you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. So these are the ingredients that I ended up using to make my soup. I've made this several times. My family loves it each and every single time. And if you don't have all the ingredients that a traditional chicken sujibi would use, then this is the best way to go. All right, to begin, we are going to be using two cups of all-purpose flour, about three quarter cups of water, add one egg, and then a tablespoon of canola or vegetable oil. And all we need to do is start mixing with the fork because it's gonna be kind of hard to mix it all up with your hands initially because of that egg. So you wanna make sure you kind of evenly distribute it around your bowl with all the flour in there. So we'll start with that and then make sure you go ahead and wash your hands and have clean hands for this because we are going to be using our hands and getting really into this dough. Now I did shorten a lot of my timing for the dough, but most of your time for cooking is going to be all from this dough, either from tearing it apart toward the end or just mixing it up in the beginning. You're going to be kneading for about 10 to 15 minutes. I think mine was about 13 minutes when I looked at my timing and that's including adding all of my mixtures right into it as well. You did see, if you were paying attention, that it was two cups of flour in the beginning and then a quarter cup of flour aside for later. What we're gonna be doing is, while we're mixing all this up and you see how sticky it is on my fingers, we're gonna add a little bit at a time to evenly mix this up so that we can make sure that we're getting all of the dough and it's not sticking to us completely. And before you add the next flour mixture into your bowl, make sure while you're mixing this, you're getting all the flour off the side of your bowl each and every single time and getting it off your fingers and wherever else that it might be because you wanna make sure you have all of that taken care of with clean hands and then start again. Add more flowers and continue doing, the, continue doing so and just use as much as you need. You may not need the whole entire quarter cup, but I ended up using the whole entire quarter cup's worth of it. And I'm gonna continue doing this over and over again until I can make sure I have all of this where it's not super sticky on my fingers anymore. And I really wanted to show you guys the whole process part of this because I want you to know what to kind of expect with everything being sticky on, on your fingers, your hands, your bowl, everywhere else. And so that's why you might see a lot more of the dough mixing than necessary. If you do have a stand mixer, go ahead and use that. Same process, except you'll be using the right accessories that you need for it and your hands won't get as sticky. But also with it as well, you will add more flour as needed to make sure that you get a smoother dough instead of the stickiness that you're seeing here. If you have kids that wanna get in on this, make sure they have clean hands and give them some dough and let them go at it as well too. It'll be fun for everyone in the kitchen. And this is me showing you my sticky hands so that you know exactly what it is to expect while you're doing this. You know you're gonna be done mixing all of this up when you get to this final texture right here. So all you need to do is just wrap this up, grab a piece of saran wrap big enough to cover your dough, your dough and then cover it up and we're gonna set this aside and put this in the refrigerator while we're prepping everything else. The purpose of covering all of this up is just to make sure our dough doesn't dry out while we're prepping everything else to make our soup. All right, starting with our green onion, all I needed just the one, you don't need more than that for this. Um, now what we're gonna do is just cut it up, that's it. You can cut this up into tiny little pieces or if you can wanna make them into bigger slices like this, this is what I did. If you guys wanna do that, that's perfectly okay as well. We're also gonna be using two eggs, so go ahead and just crack those right into a bowl. Grab your fork and whisk it around until we have all the yolks dissolved to make one uniform color here. Go ahead and set your green onions aside in a bowl as well. And then we're gonna grab our defrosted chicken so that we can slice those up into our little pieces. Again, first start off by cutting off any unnecessary fats that you don't wanna add into your chicken soup. And then we're gonna go ahead and slice these up into bite-sized pieces. You can actually make these into very large chunks or tiny little pieces, whatever you prefer. This is the size that I prefer and you know that when chicken cooks, it is going to become a little bit smaller. So if you get the larger slices like this when you do your chicken breast part, then, oh, by the way, you don't have to use chicken breast. You can use chicken thigh meat as well. 
but this is chicken soup so I am suggesting using chicken for this whole entire recipe. But again, just slice it until it's all done and then you have your chunks ready to go. Now grab a large pot and let's add 10 cups of water and let this come to a boil. Now let's grab your chicken that we just cut up and throw all of this right into the pot. I actually mixed it around with my knife but I cut that part out for you guys but go ahead and give this a mix before you add your garlic. You guys know that I already have mine pureed but use about three minced garlics and give it all a good stir. Now I'm also adding one tablespoon of sesame seed oil. We are looking for subtle flavors here so we're not going to try to overpower anything but if you guys want more sesame seed oil in your bowl add it at the end when you have your individual bowls. I'm also adding chicken bouillon base right into the soup as well because again subtle flavors is the goal that we're going for. Now while all of that is boiling we're going to let it do this for about 10 minutes or so because the chicken will continue cooking as we add more ingredients to our pot. Go ahead and grab your saran wrap of dough and just roll it for another minute or so. Just knead it and roll it and do what you need to do with it. And then you're going to get the nice smooth texture when you're done with everything. Once you're done kneading everything, go ahead and just split it right in half. It doesn't have to be exact. All we're doing is we're going to go ahead and put this right back into our saran wrap just so it doesn't dry out while we use the first half and start tearing it right into our soup. And you guys will see as we move along. Again, throw this right back into the fridge and let it sit there while we're tearing everything apart. So about 10-15 minutes later, we have our soup here and all we're going to do is grab our dough and start pulling. And just keep pulling it until it kind of naturally just pulls apart and breaks from their dough. And then you can stretch it out some more if you want to. It should be a nice, soft, fleshy, almost like an earlobe texture kind of thing. So you do this and you just throw it right into your pot. And I'm going to speed this part up because honestly this takes the longest amount of time to sit there and actually hand tear it each piece of dough and throw it into the pot. So if your family wants to help out, this would be the best time as well for them to help out. Just give them a little bit of dough and let them have at it. This doesn't have to be any particular size or evenness or anything of the sort because it is hand torn. So you go ahead and just tear apart as much as you want, however thick you want. Kind of, If it's too thick for you, if you think it's too thick, then go ahead and just roll it out a little bit between your fingers as well. And just keep tearing it apart and putting it into your soup. And as you see in the soup, some of it has already floated towards the top and it's a little bit thicker. And those are the noodles that are basically done. So we're going to continue doing this for both of the dough, the one that we already have in our hand and the other one that's going to be in our refrigerator waiting for us to go ahead and tear apart as well. Once everything is done, then all you have to do is go ahead and add your egg that we whisked up. Throw that into your pot. Make sure you get every single bit of egg in there. So I'm just going to move it around a little bit and just get some soup base and mix it all up right into my bowl and pour it right in as well. After that, go ahead and grab your green onions and go ahead and place that right into your pot as well. Now go ahead and give everything a good final stir. And all we're going to do now is place our lid right on top of this and let it cook until it becomes a rolling boil. And that's when you know everything is going to be done in your pot. So when you lift it up and everything's boiling, then you know everything is cooked. All right, it's time to serve this. Go ahead and serve this by itself or go ahead and add some rice to it as well. If you guys find this recipe helpful, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it, and until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook!